Masturbation and testosterone. This is a hot topic of discussion that's generated a lot of myths, misinformation, and outright lies. Some people say that it decreases testosterone, some people say that it increases testosterone, but in this video, I'm gonna tell you the evidence-based truth. So I've got a friend who's convinced that masturbation kills your testosterone levels. His logic is that testosterone is made in the balls and that rubbing one out completely empties out your supply. Now, that would make sense if sperm and testosterone were the same thing, but of course that's not true. So what's the truth? Does masturbation actually decrease testosterone levels? Well, according to the research, masturbation-induced ejaculation does not influence testosterone levels in the short term. And for those of you that want to dive deeper into the research, check out my blog post, which is linked below. It goes over the 27 research studies on this very topic. All right, so in the short term, masturbation fails to have an influence on testosterone. But what about excessive ejaculation? Well, this is not a topic that has been studied in humans, but rat studies actually reveal some pretty interesting results. So rats that ejaculated to the point of sexual exhaustion, i.e. to the point where they could not spill their seed anymore, actually experienced a significant reduction in their androgen receptor density. Now you might be wondering, what's an androgen receptor? Well. Think of an androgen receptor like a lock and testosterone as the key. Only by attaching to an androgen receptor can testosterone actually begin to exert its influence. In other words, maybe excessive ejaculation did not actually reduce the testosterone levels in the rat's bodies, but it did significantly reduce testosterone ability to exert an influence. Does the same effect carry over in humans? We can't say, all right? There's no studies that have been done on this topic. But the reason that scientists study rats is because mammals have very similar reproductive systems and therefore they hypothesize that the same effects would carry over. Can we say for sure? No. Is it possible? Absolutely. All right, so the third point is about abstinence, all right? Now there's a belief in boxing that ejaculation saps male aggression and that abstinence builds it up. And this is why Muhammad Ali went six weeks without having sex before each one of his fights. Freddie Roach, who is Manny Pacquiao's uh, boxing trainer, actually recommends all his fighters to give at least 10 days of abstinence before going into a fight. Mike Tyson apparently went five years without having sex during his time as a heavyweight champion. Now, this practice is nothing new, all right? Abstinence has been recommended to fighters since the time of the ancient Olympic Games. And as it turns out, there's actually some science to back it up. So in one study, subjects were brought into a lab and instructed to abstain from ejaculation for seven days. Each day they came into the lab to have their blood testosterone levels measured and on the seventh day their testosterone levels actually elevated by 145 percent. Seven days of abstinence, 145 percent higher testosterone levels. In another study which uh, took place over three weeks, similar results were found, all right? Subjects were instructed to abstain for sex for three weeks and after that time their testosterone levels significantly elevated. I wasn't able to get the exact uh, details of this study, but the researchers did tell us that testosterone levels did in fact increase after three weeks of abstinence. Now we can't say what the long-term effects of this are, but up to the three week mark, it does seem to have a significant positive impact on testosterone. Abstinence, that is. All right, and the final point I wanna talk about is the relationship between sex and testosterone. So researchers brought in 44 men and assessed their salivary testosterone levels during the time that they spent at a sex club. 26 of these men watched other people having sex, while 18 of them actually engaged in the act. And afterwards, when their testosterone levels were measured, the men who just watched the other people having sex experienced an 11% increase in testosterone levels, but the men who actually had sex experienced a 72% increase in testosterone levels. In another study, heterosexual couples were assessed for their testosterone levels on nights that they had sex and nights that they did not have sex. In both men and women, testosterone levels were higher on the nights that they had sex compared to the nights that they did not have sex. And finally, in a cross-sectional study in men who are aged above 60 years old, the ones who are sexually active 
had significantly higher testosterone levels compared to the men who were not sexually active. So yeah, having sex with another person rather than with your hand is a proven way to increase testosterone levels. And the study on elderly men suggests that the relationship goes both ways. Higher testosterone levels increases your sex drive and having more sex increases your testosterone levels as well. All right, so four main takeaways. In the short term, masturbation does not have an effect on testosterone. Excessive ejaculation, however, can play a role in reducing the androgen receptor density in the brain, which reduces testosterone ability to exert an influence. Third point, abstinence for up to three weeks can significantly elevate your testosterone levels. And the fourth point is that having sex with another person can significantly increase your testosterone levels. And this is because uh, although physiologically there's no difference between ejaculating from uh, masturbation and ejaculating from sex, psychologically there are a lot of other factors involved, all right? Like pheromones, feelings of dominance, interpersonal relationship, etc. And these are the factors that seem to influence testosterone. And if you want to dive deeper into the research, I'll suggest that you check out my blog post below. As I said, it goes over 27 studies on this very topic. But I just wanted to make a quick video wrapping up the main points. I hope that this provided you with the answer you were looking for. This has been Mo Salim from TripleYourT.com and I'll see you soon.